Hey. So today I want to talk about widgets for a bit. So when I started streaming, uh, it kind of was an all or nothing proposition. You either go in with one of the third party streaming softwares and you get overlays thrown in and widgets and all that stuff, or you just basically go with OBS and have nothing. I mean, there's kind of a halfway house where you get some third party plugins like stream elements and things like that, and they're, they're really good. But sometimes you just want something really simple. And if you have at least a little knowledge of HTML, CSS, and all that web tech, you can shove whatever you want inside of OBS because it allows you to have a browser or a HTML page as a browser source. So you can literally make whatever you want widget wise in a HTML file and then just say to OBS, hey, I want you to just render this on top of my my source, so, which is currently for me, my left monitor, but for you it could be whatever. And you can layer them all up, you can have multiple widgets, whatever. Now these are only really simple widgets. Um, on, on my stream, I, I don't tend to do that much. <laughs> I've got a, a few memes, I love memes. So there's some memes which can be triggered and I'll get into triggering um, on another tutorial. But basically for this, I just want to pop on a quick little Twitter handle so that people can see, oh, that's your Twitter handle. And then maybe they can go off and follow you. And then the second example, which I'm going to give, is just going to be putting a meme on there. And we're going to have it configurable so you can reuse this HTML page to show many memes or pop up other images, whatever you want. And for that example, I mean, you could just you could just go to sources and just add an image source. But the good thing about HTML is that you can add transitional effects into your HTML via CSS. And you can also easily resize things and do more dynamic things uh, because the web is quite a rich ecosystem these days. And here's a little preview just to show what it's going to look like when we're done. Hopefully, anyway. As you can see, there's a little Twitter handle and there's two memes there. And I'll be showing you exactly how to do all of this as we go through. So let's get started with the Twitter handle. And don't worry, all the, the source code examples are provided for you. You don't need to know HTML or CSS um, or JavaScript. If you do, brilliant. You, you Hopefully, once you've seen these, you'll hit the ground running um, and come up with many other ideas. But for now, I'll be providing the source code. The links will be in the description. So let's get into it. So to start with, all you need to do is go over to this URL, which is utter garbage. There's, there's no point trying to memorize that, but don't worry, it'll be in the description. So you can just click on it and it'll take you here. Um, if you don't know my GitHub, don't worry about it. It's, it's an open source uh, code sharing site where you can upload projects um, and people can download them and check and things. This is a gist rather than a full blown project. So as you can see, there's, there's some code embedded in here for each file. So we'll we'll download these um, one at a time. We'll save the, the meme pop-up widget for the second part. Uh, but for now, we'll download the Twitter handle widget. So if we click on raw, that gives us all the code there that we need. Right click that, save as. And then I'm just gonna put mine in OBS widgets. You store it wherever you want on your hard drive, as long as you know where it is. So save that, and then we'll minimize this. So now we've got the file, we are just have to make a couple of edits. Uh, all it's gonna be is just adding your Twitter handle in. Um, because by default it it's it doesn't it doesn't know who you are, so it doesn't show you Twitter handle. Um, you can it's a HTML file is just plain text, so you can open it in Notepad whatever you want. For me, I'm going to be opening it in Notepad plus plus. So as you can see here, there's a load of HTML stuff. If you don't know HTML, don't worry about it. You don't need to. But all that this is basically saying is include this font awesome, which basically gives us the Twitter icon. Import the font from Google, which gives us the Roboto font. You can change this to any font you want. Um, and this is all styling information. So it's telling the container to, to do some fancy transforms, do some slide-ins. And it, you don't need to worry about it, but basically it's all styling. If you do know stuff about CSS, feel free to tweak whatever you want here. But this is just a really basic example. So as you can see here, we've got this container, content, text, and then this Twitter bit. So really, all that this is, is a container on the page, which has some styling applied, and then a little Twitter icon with your Twitter handle here. So for me, that would be Groffit Plays. Now that we've made that text change in the file down there, we can quickly load up this file in a web browser. So if we get the browser here, and then we just, just drag and drop it in. There you go. That's effectively what it's gonna do. I mean, it looks horrible there, because <laughs> it's meant to be shown on an OBS stream, which will be a lot bigger than this. Well, it's it's technically a lot smaller. Let's not get into that. But anyway, this will show on your OBS stream. So, if while you're debugging things, that's what we call it in the dev world, debugging, 
Um, when you're altering this and changing things around and making your own widgets, you'll probably want to do this within a web browser. And then once you're happy, you can just dump that HTML file in OBS. But I just wanted to point out to you that it's just a HTML file. You load this up in a browser and it should work for you. So that's how you can see your widget before you go to import it. So now that we've got all that sorted, let's load up OBS. And as you can see, I've got only got my left monitor as a source. So if I press plus here, go to browser, uh, we'll call this Twitter handle, which is quite accurate. Now at this point, as you can see, HTTPS, OBS project, blah, blah, blah. Now I could tick local file and it'll let me browse to the file. And for the Twitter handle, that'll be fine. However, later on, I'm going to be adding custom query string parameters in. If that sounds garbage and you don't have a clue what I'm on, don't worry about it. I'll talk you through what we're doing. But it allows you to push variables down to the web page without hosting it in any special way. But for here, all you need to do to host it locally is put file colon forward slash forward slash and then the URL of where your HTML page lives. Uh, the width for this, let's say it's a 200 and height, let's set it about 50. And let's see how that looks. I always tick these as well. You don't have to, but effectively, to, to conserve memory, when it's not being shown, you want it to shut down the source. And also when it is shown, well, when it's re-shown, um, or shown for the first time, you want it to refresh the scene. So, well, refresh the browser element within the scene source. So what that means is, let's say that you've got something which has some dynamic data in there, um, or an animation of some kind, like a meme, <laughs> like we'll show later, you ideally want it to replay that meme. If you hadn't have set it to do this, then potentially once it's done its transition and come on the screen, it would never do the transition again. Um, so that's that's potentially why we, why we have that. Anyway, if you press OK here, as you can see at the top there, poof, Graphic Plays appears. Now we put this wherever we want. Uh, and you put it over here if you want, make it bigger. Uh, probably don't want it too big. <laughs> you don't want to block out, imagine that. Oh, there's, there's my Twitter handle. Um, so you probably want it a reasonable size. And then because we ticked the button before to say, hey, every time that we reload it, redo it, you have this nice little Twitter handle which, which pops on uh, with the nice little blue Twitter logo. So this, this could be whatever you want. You could have a bit of text there. Um, it, the, the possibilities are endless. But ultimately I've shown you can make something quick in HTML with barely any effort and lob it into OBS and show it on the stream. And everybody's going to love that, I'm sure. So <laughs> let's, let's close that one down. And let's move over to the meme one. So this is just as simple as before. So if we load up our web page again, and we go back, as you can see, here's, here's where we had the, all, all the gists. And in the future, I might add more to you uh, if there's, if there's a, a good example. I mean, by all means, share in the comments any, any that you've made, and we can possibly get some good ones added onto you for other people. But let's go for the meme pop-up widget. Again, we click the raw. There's all that lovely source code. So save as. We'll call this one meme pop-up widget. To be honest, I'm not sure if it's meme. I've always said meme. Um, we can get into that in comments or something. Let's not lose our minds over that. So if we save that, meme pop-up, and that's in exactly the same place as before. So if we close that down, and again, and get open this in Notepad++. So you got the HTML as before. As you can see, we're importing Google APIs so that we can get the, the, the Roboto font. You don't have to import these fonts. Um, I don't really want to go down this rabbit hole too much on HTML and fonts and CSS and stuff, but you don't have to import them. If you, if you want to use some which aren't on your local computer, because not everybody will have Roboto, um, you can say, hey, import one externally. And that's what we're doing here to make sure that everybody will see the same font, even if you don't have it locally. Uh, same sort of styling happening here, but it's slightly different because we're doing a different sort of layout. But ultimately, we're doing a sliding transition like we were with the other one. And this one's slightly more complicated because we've got the notion of a container, which is going to have a field set, and we're going to have a title on that, and then a meme shown. So at this point, it's worth pointing out that we've we've got Antonio.gif here, and oh yeah, so these are these are defaults which we're providing in case you don't provide any variables to the page. Again, I don't want to get into the, the nitty gritty of it because it requires some basic JavaScript understanding. But effectively at the top level, what's happening here is we're saying to, to the HTML page which is running, look on the, the URL that you're given, check if there's a title on there and an image. If there isn't an image, load antonio.gif, that'll make sense in a minute. Um, and it's going to look in a directory called memes and try and look for that image within there. And it's going to get the title element on the page, it's going to get the meme element on the page, which is an image. And it's going to say, right, the title element should be whatever the title is that you've provided in the URL, or you should just say, oh yeah. 
and it should be the image URL which we've we've done above. Again, you don't really need to care too much about most of this. And really, this is probably my fault for just waffling on there rather than just saying, there's some JavaScript, don't worry about it. But at least now you know. If you've got a, a small interest in what's going on, you, you kind of know. So from here, we need to go make a memes folder. So we'll go over to here. We'll make a new folder called memes. New folder. Memes. And within there, we need to populate it. So let's go find us some more Antonio Banderas memes. It's almost like I've looked for that before. Let's go to images. Let's get this one. There we go. Look at that. Face of a champion. So let's save that image as. Put in the memes. And we'll call it. Antonio. Dot gif. Right, with that done, all we need to do now is, like I said before, if we drag and drop the um, the meme pop-up widget into here, we should be able to see what it looks like. Oh, look at that. There he is. What a champion. And you see, you got some text at the top, and he's playing in there. But we've made it so that if you don't provide anything on here, it will automatically show that. But we've made it also so it's configurable. So in the next step, I'll show you how to configure all that. Let's get rid of that for a minute and load up OBS. So if you go back to OBS here, as you can see, uh, there's the twist on one. Let's have a look at that again. Ah, oh, what a beaut. So on this one here, again, we'll add a browser. Let's call this memes. Well, actually, no, let's call this Antonio. Antonio. Oh, that's how you spell his name. Um, then within there, same as what we did before. So file. Uh, the forward slash colon forward slashes. Uh, you can't see my new hand movements here. <laughs> the forward slashes. Um, and this isn't the Twitter handle widget. What's this one called? This one is meme pop up widget. Meme pop up widget. Um, and the height of that should probably be about. Let's go for seven to five ish and uh, probably 700. Uh, again, let's stick those boxes there. Okay. And there he is. Look at that guy. Now, with this one slides out from the right. So let's put it over here. And actually, that's pretty big. So let's scale it down a bit. You probably won't like that sort of size, don't you? So if we tick the eye, he's gone. There he is. He's back again. Now. <laughs> Everything that we've done so far, it didn't take too long to set up. I mean, granted, you've got the source code free, but it, it probably took me like 10, 15 minutes to quickly whack them together. But the idea is that you can make as many simple widgets as you want here. It'd be Antonio Banderas memes. You could have uh, an image pop up, which, which, uh, which is a sponsor or whatever. You could have just your face popping up doing silly things. You can do whatever you want here. And that's really what I want to spark with this. I want it to be a case of, with a bit of HTML knowledge, you can make any widgets. You don't have to be locked into, oh, I have to use a whole overlay and I need all these fancy gubbins and I need to get my stream elements all set up. You might still want those things because they offer some good stuff like chat integration. But if you just want a simple, a very simple widget, well, there you go. So now that we've got that working, let's reuse this one and make another meme. So let's go over here and well, before we progress, let's make a little folder, like a new little folder for things. Um, we'll call that the memes. And within there, we'll put Antonio. There he is. He's there in the memes. And let's go get another meme then. So I fancy getting, um, I, I like Excited Michael Scott. If you haven't seen the American one, it's, it's very good. I enjoy it anyway. Oh, there he is. Look at him. Oh, there we go. So let's save that again. Save image at. This is a GIF, and we'll call this one Great Scott. So, on this one, we're going to kind of do the same thing that we did over here. If we look over here again, so we're going to file a URL. Let's say the same URL because it's going to be the same thing. And we pretty much do the same sort of uh, width and height because these memes are roughly the same sort of image size. If you had bigger memes, you might want to adjust the width and height a bit more, but that'll do for now. So if we take this here, okay, I'll make a new one. So add, 
and we want a browser source. We'll call this one Great Scott. Okay. Now with this one here, we'll paste that in because we want to use the same HTML page. And actually, just to keep things simple, just for now, I'm going to press OK. Right. Let's hide Antonio. I don't want him confusing things. So at the moment, because we haven't provided any specific overrides, that's what it's going to show there. The oh yeah title with Antonio. But if we get, well, let's put, let's put him in the memes there. So if we go into properties now, we can basically say the title by putting the, we put a question mark in there. This is, <laughs> I don't want to go down this rabbit hole too much. But a question mark implies that you're starting a query string. That, that's a, a technical term. Um, but you can basically provide title equals and then give it the value. So let's say, great Scott, if I can type. There we go. Let's try that. Okay. See, let's see how the title's changed now? Because we can push variables down to this HTML file. So you can have this say whatever you want up there. Um, and it's quite a powerful feature because you can, you can kind of have a reusable widget and then pass through the variables to it and, and they can be whatever you want. So one HTML page here could allow you to have 20, 30, 100 different uh, actual uses. Let's get back to here. And we also, so we use an ampersand or an and sign. Um, and what was it? Image? Let, let's just double check because I can't remember my own code. That's a common theme for when I do code. I can never remember what it actually was. So there we go. You see these URL params? URL params get title and image. So because we, we weren't providing one originally, it's going with Antonio Doggy, but we're going to provide one this time. Image equals great Scott. Okay. okay. And look, there we go. There he is. Great Scott himself. So if you move him over, over to here, like we did with uh, Antonio, was it around there? Let's shrink him a bit. Let's have a look at the Antonio one as well. Oh yeah, he was a, he was a bit smaller, wasn't he? So let's go for about that. And then, uh, yeah, just whack him wherever you want. So if we play that again, there he is, he pops on. Good old Scott, I think that probably needs to move to the left a bit. But I'm not too precious over that. <laughs> you can size these however you want. But different memes have different sizes, so don't always expect them to be that. Some memes are gonna be really, really long. Um, I mean, you could just put a normal image in there, a JPEG, it doesn't have to be a GIF. And you have these both playing at once, you, you don't have to play them at all. Now, one thing that I do wanna to touch on here is we've, we've set up widgets, that's great. However, really you want a, an easy way to trigger these. Because if you imagine you're on stream and somebody says in chat, great Scott, and you go, oh, quick, I've got, a, I've got an alt tab or whatever, and go over here and quickly press the button. And oh, there's great Scott, and everybody, everybody on your stream now is, they're applauding. They're applauding for your, for your memeing. But then you're like, oh, I've got to get rid of it again. got to click back. That's a hassle. So I'm going to probably do another tutorial at some point in time, which will detail how you can automate some of this stuff. Uh, with Touch Portal, because I use that quite a lot. All you need is a tablet or a phone. Um, and it's free to start using the, the basic stuff. I'll probably put a new tutorial forward for that. Hopefully this has been useful. As you see, there's a Twitter handle. There's Antonio and Great Scott. That's, that's magical. People are going to come back for that stream after they see that stuff, I'm sure. And if you've got any other ideas, put them down in the comments. I'm quite, I'm quite interested to see what people could come up with. I'm going to leave it there, otherwise I'm just going to waffle all night. And you're just going to get bored. So let's cut that there. And I'll speak to you next time. Bye-bye.